Hello everyone, uh, welcome to History But It's Dumb. Uh, first of all, I think an apology is in order that I haven't necessarily been uploading very frequently lately. Um, I took a break a little bit before my school year started just to kind of figure out how things should continue with the channel. And then once I got back into it, I, I got pretty sick, so I had to take about a week off to recover from that. But I'm feeling better now, and um, I decided why not reward you guys with a long form video, because you guys have been so amazingly patient. So um, today we're going to be reacting to uh, Sabaton's Fields of Verdun. Now, if you don't know who Sabaton is, Sabaton is a Swedish metal band that writes about historical events, and I recently discovered them. How I didn't discover them before is completely beyond me, but uh, I've been listening to some of their songs. I've mainly been listening to The Last Stand, which is about the sack of Rome in 1527. I've been listening to the Winged Hussars, which is about the Winged Hussars and their arrival at the Siege of Vienna in 1683, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. And uh, my favorite one so far that I've listened to is The Unkillable Soldier, which has been about, which is, which is about uh, a British soldier that fought in the, the, the Boer War and World War I named Sir Adrian de Carton de Viart, and he basically suffered tons of injuries and he somehow survived. Anyways, uh, today we are going to be reacting to the Fields of Verdun, which is about the Battle of Verdun in World War I, which was, I believe, the longest battle in World War I. It took the pl place over the course of about 10 months and had over 700,000 casualties. Most wars in history do not have over 700,000 casualties. This was a big battle and it kind of showed everyone how big and brutal the First World War was going, going to get. And obviously they were right. It it was a really big battle, and uh, hopefully the song is also really great. So uh, without further ado, let's uh, get into it. I like that. I like that beginning riff. A little comment um, about 50 seconds into the video. I noticed all the footage so far has been, a, there's been no fighting so far, but it has showed a lot of soldiers in the trenches. I think it's probably highlighting how awful the trenches were to stay in. For those of you who don't know, World War I trenches were brutal. They were filthy, they stunk, they were boring, and they also constantly had artillery shells being fired down on them. and. Uh, just um, Yeo Kim, the lead singer of the band, just said, I think one of the lyrics was like a thousand bombshells or something firing down. Yeah, these trenches were brutal, and especially in a big battle like Verdun, they only got worse. So, uh, let's continue. Now we have some fighting. Oh, I noticed how they um they said "Thy will be done." That is actually a lyric they also use in "The Last Stand," which is, I believe, their most popular song. But it's obviously said in a different context there. But yeah, just something I noticed. I know some artists like to reuse some lyrics, and "Thy will be done" is obviously a great lyric to use, especially in historical songs about events where. A lot of people died, so it does it does highlight how many like just like you will be done, you will you you might die today. But yeah, just just throwing that out there. Oh, 
I like this. I noticed the lyrics are highlighting just how brutal this battle is, just like, father and son one by one, thy will be done, and like it's mentioning like, thy will be judged, or I think it said, said something like that. This, I like they're definitely highlighting how brutal of a battle this was. This battle was really big, um, there was also another major battle where World War One. The other one that everyone talks about is the Battle of the Somme, which was between the British and the Germans. This Verdun was the French and the Germans, and Battle of the Somme was also really brutal. Um, I think it was. I don't know if there were more casualties or not, but I do know the first day of the Somme was the deadliest day for the British Army. But they were both extremely brutal. Like most people, kind of mention them in conjunction with each other, just because. I don't think either battle was decisive either. I think no one really won these, honestly. And yeah, just tons of, just like, this is just the way World War I was. Just throwing hundreds of thousands of lives to get maybe a few meters of land, and it's not really useful. This whole war was just about wearing each other down of resources, not about actually gaining land. The landscape from like mo for most of the war um, in France, from yeah, from Belgium to France to Switzerland, I think th those lines did not change throughout most of the war until the end, when they started making significant advances. And soon after that, uh, the Americans arrived. Probably still would have won without the Americans. I'm not sure. Please don't get mad at me if I say that, because I know that might be a controversial subject. But yeah, this. This war was just about throwing lives away. This was what this war was, throwing hundreds of thousands, millions practically, of lives away at a cause that they thought could have totally been futile. And it kind of was. Germany didn't surrender just because they were closing in on Germany. That's not really what happened. They, were, they surrendered because, well, number one, things were getting pretty bad back in Germany with the October Revolution and all that. But also, they just kept on running out of resources. They couldn't fuel the war any longer. It, this war was just, it was a brutal, bloody, dirty mess. This whole war was. And I, I like how this song is really highlighting that. A lot of Sabaton songs speak about glory and the glory of the war. Um, usually from a perspective of someone in that battle. Like, for example, in The Unkillable Soldier about how Sir de Viart really just like he and he he enjoyed the war that's one of his qu quotes frankly i enjoyed the war this one is not i can tell is not glorifying it at all which i do kind of like because obviously war is a very brutal reality and it shouldn't be glorified obviously i know sabaton usually does it in the perspective of someone else and i understand that's that's a different way to do it that's completely fine but in general war is not something that should be glorified Sabaton uses the glory of the war usually to tell a story, and I think if you're using it in the context of a story, that's fine. But in general, no, war should not be glorified. I like this. Tone down. I like that. The solo. Sabaton has amazing guitar solos. You can tell you yeah, the one on one bayonet fighting. There was a lot of that in World War One, especially when one army reached the other trench. Just two close quarters to just shoot, so they had to stab each other. Very brutal.
yeah, here it is. That's a 303 days. So yeah, all my better part of, of, of the year. Longest, longest active battle in history. Longest in history. Wow, it was one of the bloodiest battles of the Great War with over, yeah, over 700,000 casualties. I did my research before this video. Can't you tell? But yeah, this was a really big war. Really big battle. So that's, uh, I, I quite enjoyed the song. Yeah, I, I thought that was really great. I, I love Sabaton. I love the, that'll be, I love just the power, the energy of Sabaton. is so, it's so roaring. It's so electric. It, it gets you hyped up in just no matter what. And I, I absolutely, I love their style. I, I love rock. I'm a metalhead. I love metal. And this is, this band, I, they're right up my alley. Not only because they write about history, I, I thought, you know, like, oh, this is a band that writes about history? Okay, I'm only going to like them because of their history. Their music probably isn't that good. I listen to their music. It's solid. It's more than solid, actually. It's really good music. It's really great. The guitar solos are great. The lyrics are great. It's roaring. It's electric. It's fiery. I love it. All right, so we got a little more text here, a little more background. The battle became a strong symbol for French resistance along with the words... On a pa on a pas I, I don't read French. I don't know French. Sorry. On a pas I I don't exactly know what that translates to. Maybe maybe they'll tell us. Hold on. No, I don't. They shall not pass. Okay. They shall. <laughs> sorry, I'm getting Lord of the Rings vibe from that. You shall not. Pass. Fun fact: Tolkien did fight in World War One. Maybe this is where he got the quote. Although the quote in the book is actually "You cannot pass." Fun Tolkien fact: I'm a big Tolkien fan as well, if you haven't noticed. But yeah, that was a really good song. Um, I intend to react to more Sabaton in the future, so uh, please stay tuned to that and um, keep on studying for your history test, everyone, because it's coming up and it's coming up fast. Um, see you guys later. Bye.